let's say I like one of these um, one of these thumbnails and I want to do a study of it um, and let's say it's this uh, this one here um, like the second one that I did with a sort of thin lettering so what I want to do is I want to take that and develop a study from that so I'm going to turn off the first layer and just stick with the second layer so I want the study to be a sort of um, workable size nothing too big nothing too small but enough to give me an idea that potentially when I go to execute this design that it's still going to be a good design I want to know early on if this design is going to be worth spending a lot of time doing. So long thin lettering with um, the actual infinite starting somewhere around here. Maybe I can even start it on the spine. So let's say here. I should give this letter some thickness right? Maybe I'll run the eye onto the spine. And then I'll line up the letters without a lot of space between them. So one of the things that I want you to do, even though you're designing and your design should kind of be tight and put together in the end, uh, throughout the study and thumbnail process, you can stay pretty loose. And by loose, I mean precise, but move quickly, right? The thing about designing and creating artwork um, is that you want to get your ideas out and down on paper as quickly as possible so that you can see what you've made and evaluate what you've made. Um, it is, this class is about evaluating um, visual ideas. And if the idea isn't out and isn't visual yet, then you have nothing to go on. Visual ideas are basically the ones that you can see because what you see matters and what you can't see doesn't really matter. So anytime you have an idea, it has to be at least somewhat executed for you to begin your evaluation of it, of whether it's workable, whether it's the design that you want. Um, also, you kind of need to try to avoid judging your work at this point. Um, you know, we're just learning, we're just practicing, uh, figuring out how design works. And you don't want to say, well, my design was bad, my design was good, because then you're kind of selling yourself short um, in terms of your development. Instead, you know, try to think about what you what you learned um, from the projects and and what you can uh, improve on and you know, where you want your design work to go. I think it's for people that are, you know, ten plus years of experience to begin to evaluate whether their designs or their art are any good. So here I've got everything kind of written out. Um, I don't have the spine done yet. Um, so we need to, to attack that. Um, David Foster Wallace is the author. Um, and typically his initials are abbreviated DFW. So I think it would be good to emphasize that. And then I'm going to leave a box down here for the logo of the publication company. Um, so that's my basic sketch, but you know it's pretty undeveloped. Let's say that I do want to use some color here. Um, I'm going to want to, um, you know, get some idea of what that color might look like. Uh, so 
I'll use some sort of thin watercolory wash um, and see what happens. So um, that's kind of a dark book. So I want to emphasize kind of a darker value plan. So I think I'm going to use like a dark gray and um, and it's a book of heavy contrast and depression. So I want to use a color scheme that's um, a bit discordant. So I'm going to use a violet and a green. So I think for the background color, I'm going to introduce a real deep, deep violet. Um, and that'll kind of lay the groundwork for the for everything. And remember, this is just to give you an idea of what your final executed design would look would look like um, if you were to spend a lot of time with it. So at this point, you're not going to spend a lot of a lot of time doing the studies. I think studies should take anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour. Um, it's like that saying, you know, an hour at home saves 10 on the trip. So um, what I would like to do is kind of work under these layers to create the the color scheme, um, and then I'm going to use a brighter, like discordant green. We'll test it out. See what it looks like next to it. Yeah, that kind of that kind of works pretty well. Um, so I make the tool size a lot smaller, and then let's just see what the text looks like with this bright green. It needs to be smaller than that. Even smaller. In a real precise kind of tool here. There, that works. And as far as imagery goes, you know, a book design doesn't necessarily have to include any imagery at all. It can be pure text design and color. And you can do everything that you need to do without really developing an image. Um, but there are some images that I could use here um, if I decided the um, background was just a little bit too dry, a little bit too boring. Um, you know, it centers around a tennis academy and a, a drug rehab center. So I could use images based on that. I could use uh, a tennis racket, a tennis ball, um, and I could layer that into my study if I wanted to in the background layers and just kind of see what would come up. So that's a good um, discordant color scheme. The color scheme kind of screams, but I'd like to switch it up for the author's name and do sort of the opposite discord. Um, so if I have a violet. Um, I think about my color wheel again and just kind of go back and just say, well, remember it's the uh it's the Roy G blue violet. Um so what I have here is a violet and I know that green is a discord and then orange is gonna be a discord. So I use kind of a, a pure green, so maybe what I'll do is I'll use like a red orange um, rather than a pure orange. And I used a real bright one, so maybe I'll use kind of a like a light value pale um, one, not very saturated, and that can that could potentially make a really interesting um, layer for the. Uh, lettering. Because at the same time as the book is discordant and a little bit depressing, it's also really beautiful. 
And then I can use that same thing for the spine there. So maybe I don't like that. Um, I can do something different. And then maybe I'll try the, the pure orange um, color and go more saturated, but still pale. And value. Let me see what that looks like. I like that a little bit better because it kind of uses the, the element of Discord um, in a nice way. So, you know, if we're talking about including imagery, there are ways there are ways to do that as well. So what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, since I'm working digitally, I have a lot of freedom here. I'm going to insert uh, a layer over the background and under the text and see what I can do there. So I'm going to go back to the background color, this kind of violet. And in fact, I'm going to eye drop that and make sure that I get the correct color. Um, and then I'm going to draw in some stuff based on based on that color, but I'm going to make it um, lighter, less saturated, and pale, so I have a little bit of contrast, but I'm still sticking within that. Um, so we talked about potential images. Potential images are like the uh, tennis racket itself, you know, and so if you draw out a tennis racket head, um, you know, it looks like, looks basically like that and has a bunch of lines going in different ways. So I could use the crisscross lines of a tennis racket um, maybe at a diagonal or something and create an interesting pattern there. Um, so if we tilted the tennis racket and kind of drew it out that way, you know, the lines would then come in here. And so what I've done here is I've created a visual chaos, and now it's really, really hard to read, which is not exactly what we want. Um, so what I need to do is go back and uh, change the value of this and make it uh, a little bit less contrast. So I can do the same idea. in a new layer. And create something that's still workable but a little more readable. So that works. Um, it's okay. It's not great. But I can keep changing it, right? Um, I like the way that the, that the value of that interacts. It's real close. Um, it doesn't distract too much from the actual text, but it is um, enough to actually draw something back there. <coughs> one of the other things, one of the other images in the book is this idea of basically what amounts to being a DVD. Um, so I could draw a ringed disc radiating out kind of from the center. And I can also relate to the form of the tennis ball and other things there too. So that can be another potential um, way to execute the design. So this is kind of what I expect you guys to do with your with your studies is to kind of investigate the possibilities and you know generate and reject ideas as you go. Again, it can be loose like this. It doesn't have to be super tight. Um, but your final executed design should follow closely and with of your closely to your study and adapt and become more precise the further you go.